with you. Okay, I know it's morning, but we're doing all the time. The Lord be with you. That's right. Um, this is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And so remember, Epiphany is all about discovering, learning who Jesus is. You see a little bit more about who he is each week when we go along. So that will be part of our lesson for today. We even hear the question about who is this guy? So um, look for all of that. And um, also, we are not doing Scout Sunday. <laughs> After we printed the bulletins, you'll notice the Scout emblem, right? And um, the last song of the day is for Scout Sunday. So it's a little bit different. We're going to have to omit some parts. We have had some illness among some of our Scouts. So we're postponing that until March 3rd. And that will be uh, also a postponement of our... Um, Super Bowl Hearing Sunday, which is when we bring in canned goods and have chili after church. That actually is maybe good news because they can find that on more time to arrange the cans. Because I know she loves to arrange the cans so beautifully. You have more time to bring in canned goods. There's also a number of non-food items that are listed in the announcements that CARES Food can typically use. So, um, this, you know, if we'll make the best of it. It's very nice. Um, you kind of go with the flow, right? That's what we always have to do. Um, speaking of going with the flow, <clears throat> I'd like to announce that the, the first song we have on page five, there are some words missing. There was a page in the back that I asked my daughter to leave there. Um, it ends with, still the greatest treasure remains. And the last words, if you don't have that page, are, for those who gladly choose you now. So if you want to write in those words, if you don't have the page from the back, for those who gladly choose you now. Um, otherwise, you're okay because we're only seeing it through once. We're not doing verse two. <sighs> Any other changes to announce? No? Okay. We are going to begin our worship this morning with confession and forgiveness. It's found on page four. Please rise as you are able. On site and online, the Holy Spirit gathers us into a community of prayer. Merciful God, we recognize that home life is sometimes fraught with tension and not always a place of harmony. Not everyone is fortunate to live in a place that is safe or welcoming. Forgive us when we upset the balance of our own home life by pushing self-interested ideas or failing to hold in check parts of our personality that can sometimes create a difficult atmosphere. Forgive us when we too readily take for granted the lives we have and are slow to recognize that some people live lives very different from our own. Forgive us when we turn away. Forgive us when we turn away and ignore the problems around us, including where people have no sense of a happy home life or where home is a place of violence and tension. We recognize the failings of our own lives and the failings of the systems, tensions, and patterns of our world that result in people struggling to know home as a place of love. Lord, let us believe in the possibility of change, that through our own faithfulness and by your Spirit, we can make the communities we live in and the world better places for all. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Again, being safe, it's best to just wave a peace sign or maybe make a peace sign. If someone's in your household, feel free to have a, a different kind of embrace. You can have a, a hug or something like that. But we want to try to keep everybody as safe as possible. So many people are sick right now. Um, our gathering song is Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Again, we have those extra words at the end for those who gladly choose you.
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now our spoken Kyrie, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The next song is Thy Word. We're just singing verse 1 for the song of praise. Today's lesson, Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 29. At home and abroad, Jesus and his disciples encounter resistance as they seek to proclaim God's word and relieve affliction. As Jesus and his disciples begin to attract attention, Mark recalls the story of John the Baptist's martyrdom. Like John, Jesus and his disciples will also suffer at the hands of those opposed to the gospel of salvation. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. 
On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their own hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust so that it is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all, that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had been known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah. And others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, is it, not, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a judge a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of his regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'd like to invite the young folks to come forward. All of our young friends are welcome to come up. Okay, you heard the you heard all of the lesson. We're not talking about the John part. That's that's gross. But we're gonna talk about the going out part. So I brought him out. We're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go evangelize. So where do you want to go? Tell people about the good news of Jesus. Like a map of Pharaoh. This is by the way. Are you are digital. This is called a map. <laughs> this, this is the way we old people used to find our way or get lost. Either way. So we're gonna find. Um, how about somebody who lives just a little bit east of the church? Okay, well, let's, let's go. Let's go. Leave this here. 
Um, who lives a little bit east of the church? Oh, here's somebody. Okay. Um, we're going to share. We're, I know we're not really two by two. We're like, what, five? Okay, whatever. We're going to get five by five. Um, so I want one of you to say something, like share a little bit about like, hey, Jesus Christ. Just, like, share something about a story to this innocent person who's not a pastor. <laughs> totally not a pastor. But we're going to, we're there for pretending. This is all pretend. So who wants to share some good news? Okay. Jesus died for our sins. Wait. Okay, yeah, okay. We did, yeah. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so will you accept it, uh, unusual, unknown person from the East? Heck no. <gasps> oh no, sometimes we're rejected. Oh, look what Ryan's doing. Are you going to shake the dust from your feet? <laughs> I can tell you have, like, you've read this story before. That was excellent! Okay, no, no, okay, we get, we just give up because it's not working. We're gonna give up, right? Keep trying. Okay, well, okay, we did someone from the east. Let's do someone from the west or, or someone just, I don't know, who lives a little bit closer to the church, maybe a little bit south of the church. Like, Joe Jack, no, we won't, we won't go there. So okay. <laughs> Dobie! Who wants to share some good news to Dobie? Okay. You can say the same thing you said um, Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Okay. Jesus fed 5,000 people. Imagine how wonderful he is. Wow, those are good. Okay. Will you accept this good news? Tell me more. <laughs> yes! It works! Okay, now let's go back. Let's think about this. How does it feel when somebody, when you tell somebody about Jesus and they're like, cool, want to hear more? How does that feel? No. Okay, and how do you feel about Pastor Taylor Anderson? <laughs> she's, she's a pastor now, and maybe she needs, maybe somebody needs, like, remedial seminary lessons. Right? No! But there are, there's a lot to think of. Why? Why would somebody, why would somebody say no? There are lots of different reasons. They're scared, right? What else? Yeah, maybe they don't want to believe. Maybe they're not ready. Maybe it's not like never, but they might not know. They believe in God, but they don't feel worthy of Him. Oh, that's good too. So that's good because we want to think about that. It's really easy to say we like Dobie because she accepted. We don't like Teal because she didn't. But you want to think of everybody as a human being, and there's reasons why people say yes, I want to hear, and no, um, not really. I'm not going to use Pastor Teal's words. We forgive, we forgive you, Mr. T. But the important thing is, sometimes you were not, sometimes you hear a yes, sometimes you hear no, and yes, shaking the dust is something you can do. Um, just that, just sort of saying, like, don't worry about it, just shake the dust, go up, go some rest, shake it off, you know? Yeah, we like that song. Okay, so now we're going to say a prayer, asking that God helps us to share the good news, and knowing that sometimes people aren't going to be ready to accept it for a lot of different reasons, we have great reasons. Um, and sometimes they will, and either way, we're not going to give up, right? So, whatever I say, you say, we can all say this together. Dear God, help us share the good news that the world desperately needs to hear. I do want to say thank you so much to Pastor Teal Anderson and to um, Dobie Elliott. I did plant them. I did ask them. <laughs> Um, and now I invite you to rise as you are able. Our song of the day is Open the Eyes of My Heart.
in retrospect, I'm kind of glad the scouts weren't here for me to be talking about John the baptizer, somebody being beheaded. Probably not a, a good thing to be talking about with those four instances um, So, now I don't think we have any astronomers here, right? No. Okay. But you know the basics. You know the basics that you know, the sun is the center of our universe and the planets revolve around the sun. Believe it or not, that was not always the case. People thought it was different than that. In the 1600s, it was commonly believed that the Earth, the Earth was at the center of the universe. Everyone thought that. They thought the Earth stayed still and the sun moved around it. Galileo, Galilei, was an astronomer in the early 1600s who improved the telescope so much that he noticed there were phases of the planet Venus, meaning there were shaded parts that changed depending on season. And he also knew some of the studies of an earlier astronomer, Copernicus, who suggested that the sun might be the center of the universe. He put all of this together, and he tried to share his findings. Now, we, we all know, right, like I said, we're not astronomers, but we all know that the sun is in the center of our solar system. It's clear to us, we've all seen, maybe even in school, you put together little planets and the sun and everything. Maybe we have different ideas about that night nice planet. But anyway, um, that concept was really new to people during Galileo's lifetime. And Galileo had to speak the truth to them. He had to say, this is what I know, this is what I can prove. And some people, a lot of people, rejected it. They didn't want to hear it. The church was especially upset about this. See, everyone believed that the earth was the center, and the church used the Bible to defend that. They used literal interpretations of scripture. Scriptures like 1 Chronicles 16 that says, the world is firmly established, it shall never be moved. Psalm 104, God sets the earth in its foundation so that it shall never be shaken. Ecclesiastes chapter one, the sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. So if anyone would have said that the earth could be moved or was not set in its foundations or that the sun was not the one rising and going down, well, that was a problem to the church. That was seen as challenging the Bible, challenging the church, challenging God. In 1633, Galileo had a trial about this subject with the church. The Vatican found him guilty of treason because he said the sun was the center of the universe. His books were banned. Galileo was sentenced, not to death, but to house arrest. So he had to live in his house the rest of his life, which was an extra 10 years after that. So in many ways, Galileo was a prophet of the truth. We heard a lot in, the, in our lessons about people trying to share the truth and how it sometimes it's accepted and sometimes it's not. A prophet is someone who speaks up for what is right, someone who speaks the word of God. Many prophets ended up suffering for telling the truth. That's a great question. So you probably want why? why? Why why did they do that to Galileo? Why would they would why would they punish a prophet? I think because for a lot of us, the truth is hard to hear. Even today, in our world today, we don't want to hear that we are wrong. I mean, just think about it. The last time, the last time someone told you, oh, you know what, you've been pronouncing that wrong, you've been doing this wrong, you don't say, thank you, that's great, I appreciate it. You love it. Now, uh -huh. we, we, get, we get really feisty. We don't want to be told that we're wrong. But that's what prophets have to do. They have to share the truth. Prophets are the ones who share God's messages with people no matter what, no matter what the cost. Now, we like to say that we do appreciate the truth. Really, we all want to know the truth and share the truth, but sometimes you have to tell someone a tough truth, that you know what? Their haircut doesn't work. Or the person that they really like, not into you. Or you are making bad life choices. Those are hard to hear. But it's also hard for the one who's sharing those words. They're not sharing it to hurt you, they're trying to share the truth with you. Jesus knew he was sending the disciples out to do this very difficult task of sharing God's truth. That's a very difficult task. The disciples may have had to tell someone that the way they were living was not what God wanted for them. They could not continue that way. 
that they should repent and turn to God. Jesus knew how tough it was, so he gave the disciples these pretty simple instructions. He said, if they accept you, stay there. If they don't, as Brian knows well, shake the dust and go. Jesus was telling them that some people are ready to hear the truth about God and others are not. And I just really appreciate that that's written down in scripture. Jesus said to leave if your message is not accepted. He didn't say stay and pester them. He didn't say torture them until you leave. They say they believe. You can't force people into this. Although so many tried during so many different inquisitions we've had throughout history, not everyone is ready to hear. But Jesus said we should try. Try to share the good news. Try to tell people the real story. And the thing is, when the disciples did that, there were so many who listened. And the disciples were able to bring about healing and curing for many, many people. Sometimes sharing God's stories is successful. And you know what? Sometimes it's not. That's okay. Even Jesus was not accepted in his hometown. They weren't sure about who he was, even though he was from there. It's very hard for us sometimes to think that the prophets are not accepted, that the truth is sometimes not accepted, and that the ones who tell the truth, the truth tellers in our world, sometimes have to suffer. Telling the truth has risks, but it is especially difficult to speak truth to power. In today's lesson, we also hear about John the Baptizer, who called out King Herod Antipas for marrying his brother's wife. So you're not supposed to do that. The best case scenario would have been for Herod to say, oh my gosh, wow, you're right. I should have done that. I have disrespected my brother's marriage. What can I do to make it better? That didn't happen. Herod was a king, and he wasn't about to change anything. And his wife Herodias didn't like some uppity guy questioning her either. They didn't want to hear the truth, so they took it out on the one who told the truth. John was silenced permanently. Telling the truth cost him his life. But even when it's not safe, we are called upon to be brave and stand up for what is right. Galileo didn't back down from the truth about the universe. Dietrich Bonhoeffer didn't back down from criticizing the evil policies of the Nazis in World War II. Malala Yousafzai didn't back down from promoting education for girls in Pakistan despite Taliban threats to silence her. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did not back down from speaking it for the rights of black Americans to vote, to be educated, to work, to be respected. And we today revere their work, the work of King and Malala and Dietrich and Galileo. And in case you're wondering about the earlier story about Galileo, I heard like, oh, poor Galileo, he was in prison. Yeah. The church did eventually, over the course of time, accept Galileo's work. But it took a long time. Can you guess how long it took for the ban on his books to be removed? 400 years. It was 200 years. <laughs> 200 years before they finally said, uh, maybe the books are okay. But he was still condemned by the church until well, 1982. Yeah. JP2 was the, was the Pope who said he could. Um, he was like no longer condemned by the church. The Bible is filled with people who took the risk of speaking out, and some were accepted, and some were persecuted for speaking out. But what else can you do when you have the words of eternal life? Where else can you go? You must stand up for the truth. And for those of us who are told painful truths, we need to be ready. Somebody, somebody might say, you know what, they're not all that into you. You need to be ready for whatever truth they're going to share. We need to open ourselves to listen. And sadly, we live in a world where we surround ourselves with people and news that confirm what we already think instead of challenging us to grow and learn. Probably King Herod had people who told him, you want to marry your brother's wife? Yeah, that's okay. He probably had people who told him that. The church had scholars who told the church, the church leaders in Galileo, was wrong. They didn't want to listen. But prophets need people to open up to listen. We should seek out those who see the world differently than we do. What is their truth? How do they experience the world? Lower your guard and listen to someone who's just a little bit different from you. Kate Murphy, the author of the book, You're Not Listening, 
said if you are having a conversation and get this fight or flight kind of response and a challenging concept when someone shares something difficult with you, take your deep breath and just let yourself be curious. Don't fight, don't flight. Just say, huh, tell me more about that. I'm interested. Go into every conversation, Murphy says, with the mindset of how can I be wrong instead of let me prove to you that I'm right. <laughs> The plight of the prophet is to speak the truth despite the cost. The truth is worth that much. So please go ahead, in some way, either in actions or in words, share your faith. It will be rejected by some, but it will be accepted by others. Share your understandings. They may change the world. Open your ears and listen for the truth. Amen. In your bulletin, there are as usual. A couple of um, things to think about messages at the bottom of page 11. Two questions. One is, what kinds of things get in the way of being able to share your faith stories in your home and community? And number two, how can we find the strength to speak truth to power despite some risks? And I'm going to invite you to get up from your pew and move around, find somebody and just share one of these questions, just two minutes, just a real quick conversation. If you don't like either of them, just introduce yourself. <laughs> and maybe you can share some story about yourself. But um, I'm gonna invite you two minutes of, of some kind of sharing about the story that you just heard, the message, the, the gospel. Go.
the gym or at the grocery store. It's not as easy. Not as easy. Margot, 
and John Volker, and among our friends, Mary, Michelle, Rick, Jay, and Finley, Norma, Julia, Rich, Huayi, Samuel, and those we remember silently in our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our young people, help the young who seek to make the world a better place and the adults and leaders who guide them. We pray for our scouts as they follow the scout law and work toward being trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who challenges, help us to share the faith stories of what God has done in our lives. Open us to receive the unique, unique ways God is at work in your people, especially those whose perspectives challenge our own. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, bring healing to people in places mired in conflict like Ukraine, Russia, Artsakh, Turkey, Syria, Afghanistan, Haiti, Myanmar, Ethiopia, Lebanon, Belarus, Libya, Yemen, Israel, the Church in the Holy Land, especially Jerusalem, and our siblings in Gaza. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, be a model for our leaders, Joe Wes and Brandon, and our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, who is on leave, presiding bishop, pro tem, Michael Burke, as well as our own Delaware, Maryland bishop, Bill Bull, and all of their staff. Unite us with our neighbors in Baltimore, our online mission field, and those in our 12-step programs offered in our coffee house and our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we especially pray for all of those who are feeling sick this day. We pray for those who seek your healing. And we know that you call each star by name. We remember all who have died. Shelter all who mourn with your mercy and give us hope in your promised salvation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You're welcome to find your way back to your seat. website and from there you can see where you can make a donation. You can also text a donation using the phone number there. Um, we have a box in the, the church lobby if you'd like to put something in and there's our address if you'd like to mail an offering. We continue to be grateful for the offerings of support for our congregation. And now our offering prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven, heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Please rise as you are able for the great Thanksgiving prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to your thanks and for it. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do 
who is the Lord that I for me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast, and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. You may be seated, and an usher will invite you forward to receive communion. If you would prefer to have grape juice, the ones that are pre-filled right there that they're passing out, those have grape juice in them. The ones that are empty, we will pour wine into we also have gluten-free wafers, so just ask your server if you would prefer gluten-free wafers.
pray together the prayer after communion. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all, and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. In your bulletin, there's a little sheet with lots of different announcements. Um, the whole thing about Scout Sunday, like I said, we're differing on that. But next next week is a special eating day. Um, instead of having Shrove Tuesday, we have Shrove Sunday. So after our church next week, come for pancakes. And um, there's more than just pancakes, so you're, you're going to enjoy it. Um, we do ask you to RSVP, so there, if you just go to that website or that, that QR code that's in there, go to activities and you can sign up for anything that's going on that is an activity, including um, we have a game night coming up, we have a movie night coming up, so all of these things are there. And the whole time I also wanted to call to your attention that we have a worship and music committee meeting, so if you'd like to help us plan Lent, which is, oh my goodness, so close, it's, it's on Valentine's Day, it's Ash Wednesday. Um, please join us for that Zoom if you have any insights, anything you'd like to do, if you'd like to play music for the season of Lent or Easter. Also, we have um, a, Ash Wednesday service is on um, the 14th at 7 o'clock. I'm, I'm kind of glad she's here because Pastor Laura Cinch is being celebrated, and so we want people to know this, that the, um, she's been the campus pastor for, it says, over oh, nearly 15 years, which is amazing. Um, and now she's in a, working on the synod level as an aide assistant to the bishop. So this is a way to sort of say thank you, and a way to say thank you if you can't make it, you can still make a donation to campus ministry. It really is an amazing organization, and it's been built up through amazing leadership. So thank you to Pastor Laura for all that she's done. Um, also, <laughs> things are coming up. We have so much coming up. Um, we have a pasta for pre-K. So, um, if you if you know anything about restaurants in Baltimore, Tony Foreman should ring it up. Um, he's a very well-known restaurant person in our area, and he is helping our preschool get fundraiser dinner. So there's, there's information about that. Also for PK, if you'd like to do that, you can read that information. We have a church yard sale coming up, and we're collecting stuff already. I know there's. A lot of things have already come in. We are so grateful for the donations that will help send our young people to the ELCA gathering in New Orleans in July. Um, a Lenten series. There's a series offered by ADMA, which is African Descent Lutheran Association. It's transforming life to life. It's pretty fantastic. If you can't make all of them, that's great. Okay. You can just register go to whichever one you're able to make. Um, this is sort of at home. Lenten Wednesday night thing. You don't have to drive anywhere, but you. this is a, a seminary professor who will be leading it, so we're really excited. I hope you're able to do that as a, maybe a Lenten discipline this year. So I know there's a lot. It's a pretty full page. Is there anything that somebody would like to highlight? Anything that I missed? All right. Um, just a quick commercial. After our worship, we do have coffee hour, which is always way more than coffee, so please join us for just a little bite to eat and a little bit of fellowship. That will be right over here. Um, when you exit the, the sanctuary, just turn to the left and you'll find it. Please rise as you are able for the blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Um, our sending song is God Bless Our Native Land, and I need to explain that. That was a Scout Sunday thing. I can't think of a, a national holiday on the 4th of February, but we're singing it anyway because it's in the bulletin. Um, it should be a very familiar to
Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.